I am so glad you're here because today we're learning all about nucleophilic addition reactions of carbonyl compounds. So if you're studying for the MCAT or taking organic chemistry, this video is going to walk you through the mechanism of nucleophilic addition and also look at the formation of a functional group that are called acetals. Let's begin by looking at nucleophilic addition reactions under basic conditions. Here, a nucleophile that typically has a negative charge is going to attack the very electrophilic carbonyl carbon. Remember that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so it is going to build up a partially negative charge. This means that the carbonyl carbon is going to contain a partially negative charge. And according to electrostatic attractions, this negatively charged nucleophile is going to be attracted to that partially positive electrophilic carbonyl carbon. So we get nucleophilic attack at that position. This kicks up the pi electrons up to the oxygen. This generates a new species where now we've turned a planar sp2 hybridized carbon into one that actually is now sp3 hybridized and is going to be tetrahedral. So now that we have added our nucleophile, what will typically then happen is some sort of proton transfer. So even though we've used uh, basic conditions to perform this reaction, we will use an acidic workup in order to turn this molecule into an alcohol. So remember that H3O plus is just meant to generate, just meant to depict any, uh, any sort of acid that you would use for your workup. And from here, the negatively charged oxygen will be attracted to this partially positive uh, proton in an acid. So therefore, we will get another attack here, or deprotonation of the acid, and this will generate our final product, which is now going to be a tertiary alcohol, where we have also added a nucleophile. Carbonyl compounds also undergo nucleophilic addition reactions under acidic conditions. And in this case, what happens, because you have a partially negative oxygen in addition to your partially positive carbon carbonyl, is this oxygen electron is going to be attracted to a proton of an acid. This is going to generate a new species where you have a positively charged oxygen. And this serves effectively to turbocharge this molecule to being even more susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So from here, a nucleophile can come in and attack at that carbonyl carbon species. And this will then kick up those electrons back to the oxygen, generating again a tertiary alcohol. Even though the product is the same, the mechanism is different depending on whether or not you're using acidic conditions or basic conditions. The rate at which nucleophiles will attack carbonyl carbons is greatly affected by the substituents on neighboring carbon atoms. So on the screen, I have three different aldehydes, each with a carbon chain that contains different substituents on them, hydrogens, chlorines, and fluorines. And we need to think about the inductive effects that having these different substituents will have. Remember that fluorine is one of the most electronegative atoms on the periodic table. Chlorine is also electronegative, however not nearly as electronegative as fluorine, and hydrogen is almost the exact same electronegativity as carbon. Therefore, this is not going to be a very polar bond. So what you might imagine then is that the molecules on, the, on this side of the screen have an incredible dipole where they're pulling electrons away from this carbonyl carbon similar to what the oxygen is doing. Remember that oxygen is also more electronegative than carbon, which is what creates the electrophilic carbon at that carbonyl position. So this means that we have varying degrees of electrophilicity of these carbons. Therefore, I would expect that this carbon containing the trifluoromethyl group is going to be the most electrophilic, whereas the molecule on the left-hand side, which only contains a methyl group with hydrogen atoms, is going to be the least electrophilic carbon group. And this would place the uh, trichloromethane group, carbonyl carbon, as the intermediate one. So for this reason, if we were to place a nucleophile in a reaction with all three of these molecules, I would predict that this one would be the fastest reaction, or the rate would be the fastest, because this has generated the most electrophilic carbon. Next, let's talk about acetal formation, a versatile reaction used in organic synthesis. Acetals are formed by nucleophilic addition of alcohols to carbonyl compounds, followed by dehydration. Basic conditions provide another example of the classic two-step addition protonation mechanism that we've previously learned about. The mechanism for formation under acidic conditions is first protonation of the aldehyde, or ketone, oxygen with an acid. 
followed by addition of neutral alcohol and then deprotonation of the oxygen with a weak base. If hydrates and hemiacetals are made through the net addition of water and alcohol across the CO pi bond respectively, then you might note a dilemma here. For acetal formation, there's no CO pi bond to add our second equivalent alcohol across. The hemiacetal therefore needs a kickstarter in the form of an acid. This allows us to protonate the OH group to give H2O+. Plus. As we've seen many times before, the conjugate acid is a better leaving group. This sets up the second most important mechanism of carbonyls, elimination of a leaving group to form a new carbon-oxygen pi bond where the oxygen bears a positive charge. Now we have a carbon-oxygen pi bond that we can add our second equivalent alcohol across and repeat the process until we're left with our desired acetal product. Now importantly, acetals can be deprotected or removed from compounds. We use them as functional groups that protect and therefore we call them protecting groups when performing synthesis. So if we have a position where we needed an alcohol or some carbonyl carbon that we didn't want to react, we could turn it into an acetal to act as a protecting group. Now importantly, this would mean that we would subsequently need to remove it once we're done doing whatever sort of reaction we wanted to do. And we can do that under acidic conditions. So remember that the oxygen contains two lone pairs which will be attracted to protons in acids. And this will generate a very good leaving group. So we will leave behind one of our ethers, and we will have another ether that has been protonated. And because of that, this is going to make it positively charged. And therefore, the lone pair electrons on the other ether group can come down and do what's called elimination. So this is the second most important reaction that carbonyl carb compounds can do, and that's elimination. So once this has happened, this will kick off the first ether, leaving behind only one that is now going to be positively charged. And then from here, what can happen is we can still have our acid present in the system, and that acid is aqueous. So importantly, now we have an aqueous compound, or H2O, which has a lone pair, which will come and attack that carbonyl carbon, which has been turbocharged. So because of that, this will kick the electrons back up, generating a brand new alcohol in addition to your ether, which we have previously said was called an, a hemiacetal. So this is a hemiacetal. And notice the distinction between an acetal and a hemiacetal is one of the oxygens is an alcohol, whereas for acetal, both of them are ethers. Now what will happen is remember we're still swimming around in acid. So this means that the ether can be protonated again by attacking that proton species. This is, again is going to generate a very good leaving group. And by doing so, now we've placed a positive charge on that oxygen. We still have our R group. And now the lone pairs on the alcohol can come down and kick off that leaving group, leaving us behind with a ketone, protonated ketone, which can be deprotonated by something like water. So now we can generate our brand new ketone. And notice that if you were to form an acetal at that position, you can put it on and subsequently take it off. And this is an idea that we're going to talk a little bit more in this course when we think about protecting certain functional groups from not being reactive as we perform multi-step synthesis. Now let's try some practice problems to help you prepare for your next exam. Pause the video and try these problems independently. Then resume the video to check your answers. Both of these reactions are nucleophilic addition reactions under basic conditions followed by acidic workup. Remember that if you were to dissolve potassium cyanide or this methoxide, sodium methoxide, what would happen is that these ions would separate into their component ions. This means that really the nucleophile that's present is going to be methoxide and cyanide. Therefore, both of these will act as nucleophiles for the carbonyl carbon, meaning that they will add at that position, and following acidic workup will kick this off and generate an alcohol. Therefore, the product of each of these is going to contain an alcohol with their respective nucleophile attached to them. So for that reason, these are the final products for both of these reactions. The first step in this reaction is adding an alcohol under acidic conditions. This is going to generate first the hemiacetal, where what happens is this alcohol will act as a nucleophile, adding at that carbonyl compound and leaving behind another alcohol. And I see that we're using acidic conditions. 
So therefore, what is going to happen is that nucleophile is going to attack that carbonyl carbon, and this is going to generate a molecule that finally, after acidic workup, is going to contain this new alcohol. So that new alcohol will be there. Our newly added species will actually be an ether, so this is going to be present as well. The next step is to turbocharge the hemiacetal using an acid. So if we are to protonate using an acid, that alcohol, this generates an OH2+, which makes it great leaving group to dispense water. This will allow the oxygen here to create a new carbon-carbon double bond, or a CO pi bond, with which now we can add our second alcohol. And this is going to allow us to generate, finally, what is called an acetal. So when we perform this reaction, our final product is going to contain still that methyl group. It is going to contain our new ether here and a second ether as well. And remember that the distinction between hemiacetals and acetals has to do with whether or not it's an alcohol or an ether, meaning an oxygen with a carbon chain attached to it. And the only way to go from a hemiacetal to an acetal is to turbocharge the alcohol by using acidic conditions to first protonate and generate a leaving group. If you learned something in today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content. If you have any questions about aldehydes and ketones or anything else related to chemistry, drop it as a comment down below and I'd be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.